Lee the Puppet, and we are back for another episode of Ask a Puppet. So we have some new questions today about literature. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Richard Pulfer asks, what are your approaches to pre-writing? What all do you do before you sit down to write the novel? As I've said before, I do not sit. And I probably should have explained that in addition to not having legs, I in fact have an entire person coming out of me, which makes chairs kind of awkward. But that said, we'll take your metaphor. What do I do before I start writing? I am on the planner end of the spectrum. And like many things, writing is non-binary. A lot of people will try to break things into planner or uh, seat of the pantser. It's not that simple. You do both all the way through the novel process. So I tend to do more planning. So I'll work out an outline and then I'll sit down and start going. But as I get into it, I switch over to my pantsing end of the spectrum. So remember, writing, non-binary. Many things non-binary. Important. All right. Hillary, I know you and I realize I've never said your name out loud, so I'm going to murder it. Sorry. <clears throat> Hillary Basiniex, what are some challenges of scaling up from writing short stories to writing novelettes, novellas, and novels? Good question. It's mostly to do with scale. So with a short story, what you're looking for is a single condensed moment, uh, a, a, an emotional gut punch. With novels, the readers are actually looking for a different experience. And that is the problem. That's the thing that, that, that most people get screwed up about. They're looking for immersion. Immersion. I can lip sync. <laughs> They're looking for immersion. And so that means that they want a lot more detail. And one of the things that a short story writer is really trained to do is to skip all the stuff that's not important to the story. The problem is that a novel reader is actually looking for that stuff. They'll assume anything you haven't left out, you haven't thought about. Short story readers, they assume it's not part of the story and doesn't matter. So, a lot of it has to do with remembering who your audience is and then also being sure that you're including enough to satisfy that sense of immersion, that, that sense of a whole world. So that's, that's one of the biggest challenges. All right, and you've got another question coming up, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna save some of the others for that. Okay, Jared Gray wants to know, says, uh, Caitlin Kiernan complained about being trapped writing to proposals uh -huh, instead of being free to write whatever came out and sell it after it was finished. Is it common for established writers to sell stories before they're written instead of after? Yep. Yep, it's weird. Um, it puts a, a lot of pressure on you, and I, I understand what she's saying there. It's also something that you don't have to worry about too much because you have a choice. You don't have to write things to your proposal. I mean, you could make an entire career, and there are people who do this, with uh, outgoing to proposal at all. The thing is, it's a little riskier. So that's basically um, one of the reasons that a lot of writers will write to proposal because then you're not writing something that's um, not saleable. You know, it sucks when you write something and you can't sell it. Yeah. Um, I am discovering, because I'm doing two episodes today, that my mouth is going a little numb. And by that, I mean the brain, which is a hand. And so uh, I'm going to cut this episode short because, uh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. 